We are live. Khan, thank you for joining us today. How are you doing? Well, thank you for having me on. I'm doing great, man. How's it going? Right on. It's going well, going well. Where are you, uh, where are you calling from? I'm calling from here in Bellevue, Washington, and I know you're not too far in Eden Clock. That's right. 30 miles is all that separates us. You're, the, you're actually the closest person that's been on the show so far, so that's, uh, you know, go Washington. <laughs> yeah. Well, Washington State, man. Everything's right. opening up soon, right? Yep, yep, yep. All right. Um, to get, get us started, why don't you introduce yourself? You know, you already said where you're from. Um, so introduce yourself. Tell us who you are and uh, how you got into real estate in the first place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I'm born and raised here in Bellevue, Bellevue, Washington. You know, I, I, I played high school football. Um, um, that was my main goal when I was you know, like 15. Yeah. I just wanted to be like a football player, you know. So I, I would, uh, I was really focused on that. I would go to weights every day. Um, uh, I was starting, um, you know, as a defensive back at Bellevue High, which was a, you know, state winning team. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was doing pretty well there, but then I ended up breaking my uh, collarbone. Um, uh, yeah, in my junior year. Okay. Um, so that made me kind of rearrange my focus. Yeah. You know, per se, I was kind of that's bummed out. That's a tough out. one. That, that, yeah. those are, that's got to be hard to heal. Yeah, hard to heal. And plus, junior year, and you're, you're like, really focused on, you know, sports, and then you're, that just gets taken away. You're, like, you can't really do this anymore. It's not healthy for you. Yeah. Um, so I kind of rearranged my focus. And then uh, I started, you know, doing, like, running start classes at the local – it, it was like, you know, where you do the last two years of high school at community college, get credits for university. So I started doing that. Um, two years later, I went to UW, um, started working on my degree, did, studied economics. After that, um, I started working in sales. I worked for a company called Datasphere. They're, they're owned by uh, Sinclair Broadcast. So Sinclair Broadcast owns um, a lot. Uh, basically the whole conglomerate of news stations, um, okay. like King Five, you know, all, all over the United States. So we put, we would partner with them and then sell like you know advertisements to local businesses um, all over the United States. Okay, cold, it was like cold calling, right? Like kind of like like Wolf of Wall Street style. Yeah, and, I actually um, think I got a got a few calls from you guys at some point. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, but um, that 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 was like you know, that was a good experience. I think everybody should do cold calling, if especially in this business in real estate, you should do cold calling. Yeah, it's um, rough for sure. Yeah, it gets you gets you you know thick skin, gets you uh, um, used to re rejection, which is necessary. But yeah, I, I started you know I I did pretty well there, and then uh you know I I. I I started selling cars and whatnot. I, I, that's all I did. I was a sales guy. Okay. So then, then after that, I, was, I got kind of bored. I was like, you know, I'm spending a lot of time here. I should probably do something where I don't have a cap on my commission. So then uh, I got my real estate license. That was like four and a half years ago. Um, and then what I got, I just applied the same skill set that I was doing at sales, working for somebody else. I was, you know, cold calling you know, working my sphere of influence, um, and slowly, you know, that builds up. And I started doing very well, you know. Um, as a broker? Yeah, as a broker. Okay. As a real, um, you know, as top producer, uh, I made immensely great contacts in the real estate industry. Um, as a broker, you know, um, uh, being partnered with lenders, various lenders, clients, and then you see, that some of what, what your clients are doing, these, some of these guys are full-time real estate investors. Um, they, they just buy, you know, properties, rehab, fix and flip them. They would, uh, you know, just uh, do a cash out refinance on the property they bought. Um, and then they just slowly built up their whole portfolio. Um, so after having all the inside info and observing all these guys and seeing, you know, what they're doing, I, I got into that. Um, about three, three years ago, um, I, I, I even partnered with some investors and I started buying, um, some small condos. 
Okay. Okay. So condos is how you really got into into investing, at least. You got into real estate as a bro in, through brokerage, um, through being a broker, and then you entered investing through condo. Were you flipping them, or or what were you doing to them? Yeah, I was. Uh, you know, I was uh, just buying them, and then uh, I would get them at you know pretty like wholesale rate. Um, pretty much wholesale rate from from uh, the sellers and usually these sellers were um, distressed I mean it, it there's always deals out there you have to find them you know sometimes the, these uh these sellers they their contract their foreign workers the contract is up and then they have to literally leave the country and sell whatever they own the middle there's a condo like a 300, 400, you know, it's up to half a million dollar condo here on the east side. Um, they have to sell it as soon as possible. And they'll sell it usually for like 50 grand to 100 grand less than what it's actually worth on the market. Um, and the, uh, I I saw, saw that opportunity. And it's really about having an eye for opportunity, having an eye for what's, what's out there. Yep. So you, uh, so as a broker, you worked with um, a lot of, I mean, there are a lot of uh, um, overseas employees here and you work with people who are, who are looking to transition out of their condo. Um, so kind of take us to what are you doing right now? Like what is your, what is your main bread and butter when it comes to real estate investing? I was able to uh, recently, you know, in the, in the past two years, I was able to um, buy a, a nice piece of residential property. It's about, you know, um, seven units, seven units. So it's like a small apartment building. Okay. So yeah. Residential. A, that, that's a, that's not a single family, seven units. That's, that's commercial grade. Yeah. It's actually residential, but, um, what's really cool is, um, a lot of residential places, you can do modifications to them to add more space. Um, um, so they're really residential and zone residential, but you just add more space and then have them rent it out, you know? Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, so it's like, um, taking, uh, and taking advantage of the space, but yeah, it's seven units. Um, it, it was originally like five, you know, traditional four or five or five bedroom house, but I turned it into more. Oh, okay. So you house hacked, yeah. you, uh, you turned... A single family into a you're in you're renting out individual rooms right yeah yeah gotcha yeah. okay so uh um it's it's i think it's easier to do sometimes like like in this in this way because when you do it like that then it's uh especially in high you know high cost of living areas when you're renting out single single units and single rooms instead of like a whole house for like four or five grand you're going to get way more renters and then it's going to be way easier to find a renter um, especially yeah. especially in times like these, you know, in the, where people are losing their jobs and people are on un unemployment. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I got that opportunity and then I have, I have them rented out. I have them rented. I got it at a good deal. It was a new construction. Oh, so nice. new construction. Um, That's good. Yeah. And, and, um, I negotiated with the builder. So th that's also um, another technique that uh, as a real estate investor you can use is fo they say follow the builder. Okay. So whenever these, you know, these uh, huge, you know, conglomerate, you know, builders, they, they snatch up neighborhoods and you see these big residential projects going on with like eight, 10 houses, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's where the money is going to be made. Um, that's where they're projecting to see it you know, increase of buyers, which is right, true. And yeah. in, in this neighborhood that all that there's like eight houses, they all got bought up within a couple of months. Yeah. Builders um, do their due diligence when it comes to demographics and where, uh, where, where the shifting is taking place. So that's, if you follow the builder in terms of buying in their wake, that is, uh, that is usually a good idea. So you, uh, you, you found an individual builder and you went and you asked to, and, how did that work out? How did that uh, situation play out? So I, ne I negotiated the the, pr the price with them. So it was it was listed uh, for about one point two four nine. 
So um, um, that was the listing price, 1.249. It's it's in Newcastle. Um, oh, okay. So really nice area. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, you're familiar with that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it was listed for that uh, 1.249. It got it down to like, you know, 1.2, around 1.2. Okay. So, um, you know, I was able to, able to save like, you know, around 50 grand on it. Okay. And then um, right on purchase, it, it appreciated immensely. Um, uh, so that, I mean, apart from that, you know, yeah, there's equity, there's some equity made on the, on the house, you know, mm -hmm. um, but my, what, what I want to do, what my goal is, I think what every real estate investor's goal is, is to buy and hold. Yep. It's to get buy and hold. Flow. Yeah. It's get, yeah, get the cash flow, you know, because it becomes a, a sort of oil well for you. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's right? a good way to put it. Um, because, so <laughs> so this house in uh, this, so is that your only buy and hold right now? Is the, is the, um, the house hack that you did in New Newcastle? Yeah, that's my only one right now. Okay. Um, and, and, and it's doing pretty well. Are you, uh, you're cash flowing, you're above, uh, you're in the, in the black. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's cash flowing. Yeah. It's cash flowing. Um, I'm working on some other flips right now. Um, in the, in Cause uh, especially right now the the market's gonna I think tank for a bit, because mm -hmm. um, of the uh, pandemic. So I'm working on some uh, flips as well. And then there's a lot of people who are being foreclosed on as well. No. Yeah, unfortunately that is uh, that is happening. Yep. Unf yeah, so, unfortunately. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna shift gears just a little bit here. Um. You've kind of talked a little bit about what you're doing. Um. What, what your goals are. Um, I kind of want to go into the, you know, the inner workings of, of how you do what you do. Um, you said you do a lot of cold calling, but um, kind of go into how do you find your deals um, and like what criteria do you use to define whether one deal is a buy or, or a pass? Usually how I go about finding them is uh, to really uh, pinpoint where there's a, there's a need. There's a need. Um, I think real estate market is shifting towards, uh, towards, um, you know, the tradition from the traditional sense of like buying and selling, like, you know, using agents and whatnot to buyers doing their own due, due diligence yeah. and researching. Um, uh, there, there's a lot of real estate companies popping up. Like there's, uh, there's, you know, whisper, Real estate. I don't know if you heard of them. They're in Bellevue. No. Um. Yeah. There's Whisper. There's, there's some other companies, and they just specialize in finding off-market deals. Okay. So okay. Off, yeah, off-market. So when you find off-market deals, it, it's it's uh it really when you try to pinpoint where the off-market deals are, it it puts you in a place of advantage because um, not everybody's going after them. So usually the deals get uh, get you know snatched up by investors. There's a bunch of people you know, in especially in in this state, Washington State, you know where there, where there's a lot of opportunity for real estate. We have a 12% appreciation rate, um, you know, highest in the country. We're, we're seeing an immense growth in real estate um, in, in this country. Um, so a lot of investors are snatching up deals when they see it pop up on the MLS. Yeah. So for, for average guys, you know, like, you know, guys who are, you know, small business owners, kind of like us, you know, who are working on our own, we're not like part of like, you know, huge investing companies, you know, these people with like, you know, hundreds and hundreds, you know, billions of dollars who are just buying, you know, buying everything up. So that makes it hard for us. So we have to be a little savvy. We have to be, you know. Um, a little smart and I think the off-market deals is where that comes in and doing your research and then it's not about um, a high number of calls like in traditional cold calling mm -hmm. but it's about the quality yeah. of uh, deals you can find and then putting putting a good offer forward okay so um, so to find the deals that you were just talking about, um, there you, you said it's it's not really about volume so much as it is about quality. So how do you go about um, making sure that you have a high quality, um, you know, 
data set to be working from to identify um, people who are motivated to sell. Oh yeah, it's it's uh, r really about um, asking the right questions. Um, you uh, you ask them why are you trying to sell, where are you going to move, how how soon you want to sell. Um, um, usually when they're not as relaxed, they're like, oh, I'm just trying to. What do you, you have any offers? You, you, you know, any you know, what, what do you think? How much is it worth? Usually when th those types of uh, things come up or questions, there's an opportunity there. There's okay. an opportunity there. Um, if they're just like some people just like put it on the market and like whatever, I just want to see it. Or what, I don't, they don't need to sell it or they don't even want to sell it. They're just like testing the waters. Um, that's kind of, you can kind of, I Higher think. Higher kickers, that's what I call them. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, yeah, you have those, but you also have serious people. A lot of people they're in re residential real estate. There's always people buying and selling. There's always some opportunity to be found, um, and and you know if you see a neighborhood where a property was sold, a house or land or anything that was sold, you can contact the adjacent owners and say, hey, th these guys sold. It's a good time to sell. Would would you accept an offer for this? So, something like that it That's really an interesting uh, tactic i've never i've never heard that used before so what uh so what tools do you use to um to one get your get your data and to skip trace the the right owner get get the data and then get to the right owner yep so for uh data you can use that you can use any m l s database public records um uh which uh yeah Public records, MLS databases, you can see all the info, you know, um, on the property, when it was, when it was purchased, how much they put down on it, um, who the broker was, and whatnot. But yeah, public records come in handy for that. Okay. All right. All right, so um, I'm going to shift shift gears one more time here. We've gone through your business, um, you know, what you're doing, um, how you're doing it. And so now I'm going to ask a little bit about your experiences. Um, I mean, we all know real estate has ups and downs. It's a roller coaster. Um, so kind of take us through the, you know, the, the trough um, through one of your one of your valleys. Um, so what has been the hardest thing you've experienced so far and what did you learn from it? And then uh, and then take us to the peak. Um, tell us about, you know, what what. What do you love about real estate? Why are you in it? Um, what gets you up in the morning? Oh yeah, definitely the hardest thing about real estate is and being in this business. I mean, you're obviously self-employed. You work for yourself. Um, so, and in this business, you're not getting like a constant paycheck. So the, um, you really have to be self-motivated. Um, you're you're not gonna no nobody's gonna hand anything to you, nobody's gonna you know give give you anything. So you really have to wake up every day and say I'm gonna go get it. Um, you have to go out there and and you know get the get the deals. And once you change, I think your mindset from sitting and expecting things to come to you to hey I'm just gonna go out there and grab it for myself. It your whole your whole life changes. So, um, I think that's the hardest thing for for me. For me to, you know, when, when, when I was working a job, you know, you just go to your job and then they just give you leads or whatever and then they tell you what to do and you just make sales. Like you're an employee, you're a W-2 employee and they, they really dictate what you do and how Very much you passive. Do. You're just kind of like, you just sit in and you do whatever it is that they tell you to do. Yeah. And then if you, if you have any, if you have any input, what's our like, no, shut up. Okay. We're paying you. <laughs> You know, so <clears throat> yeah, that's the hardest part. That's the hardest, hardest mentality change. And then, yeah, the, it's not going to be easy. It's not like, you know, hey, I'm just going to be an entrepreneur. I'm just going to invest in real estate. And then, you're, and then all of a sudden you're making big bucks. No, it's really, you're going to be broke for a while. You're going to be broke for a while. You're going to not make any money. But then once you get used to being broke and you're like, okay, I can handle this that's when your mentality changes and you, you, you realize it's not really about the money. It's really about controlling, 
controlling your destiny, controlling your business and making it grow, then um, I think uh, that's what I love about it. That's what I love about it. I love real estate because there's um, self-direction. Yeah, self-direction. I can control what, what I do and um, uh, is there's ownership in real estate. There's real wealth in real estate there's you know legacy in real estate and there's not all of those things in anything else right and and it's real estate is part of what has made a lot of people actually most of the self-made millionaires in the united states are self-made through real estate i heard that before yeah i heard that uh that statistic it was something like 70 percent or something like that yeah and, and and land and real estate ownership is so valuable. It's always been valuable um, it, it, in all cultures, um, you know, since ancient times, um, um, because it's been it's been leveraged through conquest, through through you know trading, through through uh, you know um, through uh, you know the gentry. They it, it's just very it's very special to me. I'm I'm very as I, I, as you can see, I'm passionate about land real estate. So, yeah. That's great. Yeah. All right. We're, uh, we're making one more shift here. Um, and I want to ask a little bit about um, kind of what, uh, what makes you effective in real estate. So um, tell us, what is the, the one habit that contributes the most to your success in investing? Um, I, I would definitely say you have to know how to deal with people. Um, so I got that advice from, um, a good, a good friend of mine. I mean, he's a little older, so he's like kind of like a uncle, uncle figure or, you know, um, his, his name mentor. is, Sam, yeah, mentor. Yeah. His, his, uh, his, uh, name is Sanford Ibrahim, Sanford Ibrahim. He's the retired, um, retired CEO of Radeon group. Radeon, Radeon. they make, uh, um, graphics cards, right? Uh, I think uh, Radeon. So Radeon was like a mortgage. It was a mortgage based oh, okay. business. Okay. Okay. So it was a mortgage based business, and um, he he did really well. In, you know, in his life, he met like Barack Obama. You know, government. Um, he had you know connection with government, and he's he's retired now, and he's still running companies like sixty in his sixties. He just run running companies because that's what he loved to do. Sixties young. Sixties the new thirty. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and so he, uh, I asked him, I was like, what's your advice for somebody starting out in business? He's like, you have to know how to deal with people. You, you, you literally have to know how to, and, and it's, 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 it sounds very simple, but once you really see, you know, what, you know, how people are, you, you, f you figure out how valuable that is. So, um, especially in this industry, all the real estate is owned by people. Yep. So, and then you're going to be negotiating with people. They have their emotion and, and they have their emotions invested in their life savings, which is usually real estate. Right. So if they're not going to just give it to you, they're not going to, they, they have their emotions invested to it. You know, they, it kind of hurts their ego. If you lowball, if you lowball somebody, it's going to hurt their ego. That's absolutely true. I've uh, experienced that many times. And uh, the hard part about that is that um, one person's idea of a low ball is another person's idea of a fair market value, um, especially when you're looking at property here in, you know, high, uh, high um, valued areas like Seattle, where houses are worth $500,000. Um, and if you're looking at, you know, flipping that house and you have to offer them, um, you know, $300,000 because they have $100,000 worth of repairs in their property, and they think that their house is worth 500, that's a, then they'll, if you, if you, unless you set that up, set that conversation up correctly, then uh, they will easily take offense to, um, to a $300,000 offer because Zillow says 500 and they believe Zillow more than anything else. And so that, so I, I think you're absolutely right. Um, you definitely have to set conversations up and understand that you're talking with, uh, with the person and, uh, and, and make sure that they, um, that they know that, that you're not trying to lowball them to take their money. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. So um, we're at the end of our segment here. Um, so before we, we cut off here, though, tell people how can they get in, um, get in contact with you? And then um, what is it that, you, that you're that you looking for um, if somebody wanted to bring you, say, a deal or um, just what is it you're looking for in real estate? Okay. All right. All right, cool. Yeah, well, um, all you guys out there listening, if you want to get in contact with me, you need help with any type of real estate transaction, lending, private lending, um, you can reach me on my cell phone. You can text me. It's 425-289-9002. I'm here in Bellevue, Washington. I go all over the Seattle area. Um, um, yeah, yeah, pr pretty much. And then I, what... What I'm basically looking for and looking to help people with, and if you're coming to me and you have any questions, is uh, um, especially in these times, in times of the pandemic, interest rates are extremely low. So if you're looking to buy um, and it, or invest, you have an existing property, it's, it's a really good time to do it. Make some cash, make some money. And then you're seeing now, especially with unstable, you know, employment times, like make, make, make a, you know, make an empire, make, make, make your own business. You, you can do that. It's possible. Like, look, look at us. We, we, we didn't have anything before. We didn't have a business before, but we, we found the techniques, we utilized these techniques, we worked hard and we found um, deals that make us money. And I can do that for you guys too. So there you go, you heard it. All right, well, Khan, thank you very much for, for hopping on here. Um, I appreciated everything you had to say and I'm sure everybody listening and watching also appreciated it as well. Um, if you're watching, listening, you wanna get in contact with Khan, um, you can reach out to him on LinkedIn or um, he just put his phone number here for you so you text him there. Otherwise, we will see you guys around.